The walking clickbait and former Bachelorette contestant, Josh Sider, came out as a stunning and brave trans woman earlier this year. I'm a little disappointed with the lack of support that I've received from other women during my transition. I have to admit, the women's bathroom is so much nicer than the men's bathroom. I just wanted to take a second to talk about a really important issue that affects so many of us, and that's getting our prostate checked. Many questioned whether Josh's transition was real, was authentic. And that's probably due to we see so many videos nowadays of men who self id as trans women to get into women's spaces. The truth has finally come out. Josh has confirmed that him identifying as trans was a social experiment. Let's react to this interview with Josh where he, for the first time in six months, drops the act and explains why he did what he did. You want to know what's going on? Well, I gotta be honest, for the last five months I've been conducting a social experiment online to expose how gullible and how delusional the left is. I was talking with some friends and we said this is patently false. Men do not magically become women. I said let's look at the medical literature and what it says. It says that trans people don't have to transition, don't have to have gender dysphoria, don't have to get surgery, and don't have to get hormones. If they feel they are a different gender than their bio sex, then they are trans and they are valid. And I said, understandably, this is ridiculous. Right, these are claims that I try to debunk constantly on my channel because they're not true. These claims have nothing to do with real transsexualism with gender dysphoria. And I wouldn't call it medical literature, I would call it ideological literature. Josh was of course trolling the internet, and it's so funny to read the comments from trans activists or from like woke people in general who are upset with his social experiment that he claimed to be something that he's not. The irony. I cannot believe that you would do this to the trans community. You're hurting us. He's the one hurting the trans community? Well, if he was serious when claiming all those horrible stuff, yeah, he's a part of the problem but he just repeated the talking points the trans community has created. So why be mad at him? He followed the rules. He followed your rules, wokeism's rules. He exposed how ridiculous it is to affirm these men with full-size beards and hairy chests as women. This comment from Axe is everything. Stop using our community for clout, you piece of trash, just because you're not interesting on your own. That is exactly what he's trying to prove. Trans activists who are just regular men and women who are not trans identifies trans for clout? To feel special? They're appropriating an experience and are forcing themselves to be in a community they don't belong to. What this comment describes is the reason why I make videos. It's the reason why I'm here. I'm saying exactly this. Stop using my community for clout just because you don't think you're interesting enough being a straight cis person. I think the reason why trans activists are triggered is because Josh has humiliated them. His social experiment shows how much people are willing to just nod along, no matter how absurd it is, just to be progressive and tolerant. People who are woke know that they can't gatekeep who's a real trans and who's not. It goes against their beliefs to do that. They know they can't say, well, Josh isn't really trans because he's not serious because, you know, he has a full-size beard and a hairy chest. He's not putting in the effort to look like a woman. It's a no-go to say those things because according to them, anyone who identifies as a woman is a woman. Body hair doesn't define gender. A full-size beard doesn't define gender. You don't need to transition to be trans. I personally thought it was quite obvious that Josh was trolling, that he wasn't serious. I'm actually not sure how many people bought it, believed that he was a trans woman, a trans activist. So you could argue that maybe his experiment didn't do much. I don't know. I think it was hilarious and I think it was brilliant. I love trolls. However, I can't ignore the disappointing thing about all this, and that is how uneducated Josh is about gender dysphoria and mental disorders in general. In the interview, Josh described gender dysphoria as a delusion, which is absolutely ridiculous. 
They deserve our compassion. Lots of trans people are suffering from a diagnosable mental illness, which is gender dysphoria. It's in the DSM-5. And so they deserve our compassion and our help. And that's why I did this, because I'm offended at the medical community and the media that indulges these delusions, eggs it on, confirms these people's beliefs that they're something they're not, instead of treating them. Instead of giving them hormones, they need help. We can all agree how delulu trans activists are. They're super brainwashed and they're not effing trans. So I think it's super important to understand that there is a difference between real transsexuals who have basically always existed, who just want to live a normal life as the opposite sex, and then trans activists, the men with full-size beards in dresses, the women with blue hair and septum piercings. They do not know what it's like to deal with gender dysphoria. They deal with other mental health issues. A lot of them do. Gender dysphoria is the extreme discomfort a person feels regarding their biological sex. And it's due to understanding and perceiving what their biological sex is that someone would experience the symptoms of gender dysphoria. If I were delusional, I would ask a female, look in the mirror and see a man with a huge ding dong. But that was not my experience. When I looked in the mirror, I saw a woman. I saw female secondary sex characteristics and that caused me the distress. That's the point of being gender dysphoric. You feel uncomfortable about the things that are real, that does exist, so therefore not a delusion. Look, I understand why people like Josh, conservatives in general, are against trans. We hear about it all the time and the trans people we see do so much harm. They're in women's prisons, sports, locker rooms. We're also seeing children being harmed with puberty blockers and cross-sex hormones. All of this is absolutely disgusting. But it's important to understand that you can be against all the things I just mentioned without being against gender dysphoric individuals who after their transitions are happy, are a part of society, are not causing any issues, any harm. It is of course possible to be against children transitioning without being against real gender dysphoric people transitioning. You can even, and this is my opinion too, you can even be against some adults transitioning. It is possible to be against, let's say, uh, a schizophrenic man who wants to transition because some voices in his head told him to. Like he's so mentally ill that he doesn't know what's reality and what's not. It would be so cruel, so unethical for doctors to cut off his eggplant and just sterilize him. We all deserve proper help and mental health is complicated. That's why it's important for doctors to diagnose their patients with gender dysphoria before giving them the transition. All patients, no matter the age, who wants a transition should be thoroughly assessed before anything irreversible happens. Because if not, a lot of patients will get wrongfully treated, wouldn't get better, wouldn't feel better mentally. Transitioning an individual, an adult, should be the last resort. I totally agree. Therapy is important. Ruling out other mental health issues is important. But very few individuals wouldn't feel better by just going to therapy. So no matter what you believe in, you can't ignore that there are people like me, Buck Angel, Blair White, Sarah Higdon, who are happy after we transitioned. Real transsexuals are frustrated more than anyone else that trans activists who can't relate to our experience represent the trans community, trans people. They are literally creating so much more transphobia in society due to their activism, due to their ideology. But transsexuals like myself, Blair, Buck, Sarah, we're out here. You can actually find us on the internet when doing research about the topic. So I think Josh is extremely lazy and that's something I see with a lot of people from the far right. I'm not saying he's far right. It's such an ideological thing, refusing to be nuanced, to not think for yourself because you already follow and listen to an ideology that have all the answers. It's lazy to not even look up the definition of gender dysphoria in the DSM 
It says nothing about it being a delusion. Ironically, right-wingers like Josh act like far leftist. It's the horseshoe effect. Both extremes act extremely similar. It's the all or nothing attitude that pisses me off. The far left is saying anyone who wants to transition should. And the far right is saying no one should transition. Where's the nuance? Where's the logic and common sense? What is your alternative to the people who would most likely otherwise benefit from the transition? What is your alternative? Therapy? It's a lazy argument. And it's also a lazy argument to be like, kids, kids should transition because they know themselves. Puberty blockers aren't harmful because, um, science. Sorry for ranting, but the reason why I brought this up, the reason why I criticized Josh, despite him being based, I guess, is because he in this interview came after Bug Angel. Bug Angel is a dear friend of mine, and he's incredibly smart, and he's doing a lot of great work. He is just like me and Blair, Sarah, fighting every single day to end this madness, to save the children, the women, from trans ideology. It doesn't make sense to me that Josh decided to shit on Buck out of all trans people out there when he's one of the most logical ones. It doesn't make sense. But do you all know why he did it? Ideological people are on autopilot. They're like, oh, trans is bad. So I'm not going to listen to what the person has to say. I'm not going to do my research or anything because I know that I just have to be against it because my party thinks so, or my ideology thinks so. Josh is generalizing all trans people, lumping all of us together. And as he stated, he was trying to expose the left, like all trans people are leftists. That's not true. I mean, real trans people are diverse, can be on the left, can be on the right, can believe in anything, basically. But of course he is right, if he's only talking about the activists who are faking being trans, who are frauds. But he is talking about all. It's disappointing he has this all or nothing attitude. It's disappointing and lazy how he's not willing to do research about a topic that he's clearly so interested in. When making a social experiment about something, shouldn't you be educated? Shouldn't you know something about the topic? Or is it just me? But as I said earlier, I applaud him for doing this social experiment. I loved seeing the comments with really upset triggered trans activists and how stupid they are for not seeing the irony. It's brilliant. Before you go, I just want to thank you for watching this video. If you want to see more content like this, remember to hit subscribe and the notification bell. Follow me on social media and I cannot wait to see you all in the comments down below. Peace out.